90 years old. He died at 10.01 p.m. last night in his home in Salt Lake City. He was with family at the time of his passing. He served as the 16th president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints since February 3rd, 2008. And he leaves behind a legacy of great service when he was ordained as an apostle in October 1963 at the age of 36. He was the youngest member of the Quorum of the Twelve to come along in 71 years. President Monson also served as president of the church's Canadian mission. He was headquartered in Toronto, Ontario. And prior to that, he served in the presidency of the Temple View Stake in Salt Lake City. And as a bishop of the 6th, 7th Ward in that stake. Professionally, President Monson had a distinguished career in publishing and printing. He became associated with the Desert News in 1948 where he served as an executive in the advertising division of that newspaper, as well as the Newspaper Agency Corporation. President Monson also served in the United States Navy near the close of World War II. Now, Sam Penrod is at church headquarters this morning for us as he is talking, of course, about the passing of Thomas S. Monson. All right, Sam. Uh, listen, I, I know it's early on in the morning. There's not a lot of people there running around to talk to. But listen, you've covered the church for years and years now, and you've spoken to uh, many people in leadership and different positions within the church. Uh, what's the feeling, uh, the mood? People kind of saw this coming, I'd say, probably for the past year or so. Yes, this is not going to be unexpected news, but I still think some people will be caught off guard. I uh, have not heard any uh, updates on President Monson's health in some time, but he celebrated his 90th birthday in August and uh, certainly had slowed down in recent years. And so I think there will be sadness here, not only here at church headquarters, but around the world from Latter-day Saints who remember and love President Monson. It was just before midnight that the official announcement was made by the church that he had passed away just after 10 o'clock last night. President Thomas S. Monson served nearly 10 years as president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but his legacy of church service dates back to October of 1963 when he was called as an apostle at the young age of 36. His service took him around the world ministering to church members. In 1985, when he was 58 years old, he was called to the first presidency, serving as second counselor to President Ezra Taft Benson and would also serve Howard W. Hunter and Gordon B. Hinckley as counselors before becoming president of the church nearly 10 years ago in February of 2008. As church president, President Monson continued the church's focus on building new temples around the world, and he participated in many of the dedications himself. And then his announcement five years ago of the missionary age change became very significant, allowing Latter-day Saint men to serve at age 18 and Latter-day Saint women to serve at 19, which dramatically increased the number of missionaries in the church. His contributions over what was more than a half century of service as a church leader will be remembered in many ways, uh, from helping the church grow and be established in Germany to his support and encouragement of scouting, and then most importantly, his personal attention that he gave to individuals, including the widows he served as a young bishop in Salt Lake City. The LDS Church released some videotaped statements overnight from both of President Monson's counselors. The hallmark will be the individual concern, like the Savior going out to the, the poor, the sick, whoever. And, uh, and worldwide, the fact that he had he loved Samoa. He loved the saints in Germany. He loved he loved all across the world people. They loved him, by the way, <laughs> and they felt that. But I think that'll be left. The idea of I think it's more than the individual. It's all individuals. We'll miss his friendship. I'll miss him as a friend, as one uh, who can be trusted, one who was very kind, very generous. Uh, very caring, loving. He will be remembered as a prophet to uh, move the church forward through his example. He lived what he preached. He was a man of the people and a man of God. And this combination was just uh, wonderful for our time. It was just right. And both of President Monson's counselors uh, spoke 
to me uh, in September. Uh, President Uchtdorf was in Houston after Hurricane Harvey and President Eyring in Florida after Hurricane Irma. And they both made similar remarks saying if President Monson could be here, he would be here. This is what he did, minister and serve people. And uh, in the midst of the disasters that were going on in those locations, they said he wants us here to express his love to the people because uh, that is what he will be remembered for. And that's uh, the name of his biography, To the Rescue. And I think when uh, the years go on, that is what President Thomas S. Monson will be most remembered for. Yeah, I was going to say, Sam, uh, you know, when you, you, when you think of his legacy, you think, okay, what, what is his legacy? What is, what is the one thing he'll be remembered for? And it sounds like as you listen to some of those sound bites from other uh, leaders of the church, uh, there are a number of things. But in your mind, too, as you grew up in the church as well, and uh, your history with uh, reporting on these things, um, what would you say he would be most remembered for? I think most church members will say that they loved his talks in general conference. He, he was a storyteller. He didn't uh, get to the, the message that he was giving without first setting it up with a story. And a lot of them were his own personal stories, some of them from his childhood and other experiences he had had as a church leader. And so I think his stories uh, really connected with people. It helped them understand the principle and concept that he was trying to teach in those general conference talks. And he had quite the stories as well. Um, we heard President Eyring talk about how he was so focused on the individual. And reading um, President Monson's biography, back in the 70s, he flew 5,000 miles behind the Iron Curtain just to bless a single person. I mean, that's quite incredible. It is. And I think uh, his other fellow church leaders would tell you that he would much rather go out and help people and visit people than to attend to the church business that he had in the administration building. And so that is what he loved was being out amongst the people and, and helping others. Yeah, we hear all these stories uh, that come out of all these uh all the service that he did perform and help people out, sneaking out of meetings so he could help out others. We probably don't even know half the stories, do we, Sam, of how he went out to help others? No, because it was always very quietly. But there's a lot of stories, and I've heard them over the years from people saying, I remember the time President Monson came to the, the nursing home where my grandma was. He was going to see someone else there, but he stopped by and said hello. And there are a lot of people here in this community who could tell similar experiences over the many decades that he served as an apostle. You know, I'll tell you what, too, back when he was sustained as president, I had the opportunity to interview John Huntsman Sr. And the way Mr. Huntsman talked about him was the same as uh, President Monson's next door neighbors, just the love that they felt for him. And here you have the billionaire next next door, next to the, the people who live next door to President Monson in, in a, you know, a humble neighborhood. But the feelings that were shared were the very same. It was quite incredible. It really was. And I think that's what made him very remarkable is that he was able to connect with uh, anyone. It didn't matter what your stature was in life. He saw everyone, as uh, church members would say, as children of God. And so mm -hmm. he had that ability to just reach out to anyone, no matter who they are. All right, Sam Penrod, live in Temple Square for us this morning. Sam, stick around. We'll check back with you a little bit later as the morning progresses. Let's go to Sheriff Park now. She's live in the newsroom with a uh, reaction to, uh, to his passing online. As you know, with social media, uh, things blow up out there. And mm -hmm. I already saw things as, uh, what, as this broke late last night, we started seeing things on social media pretty quickly, Shara. Absolutely, Mike and Lori. As I got on social media this morning, Facebook and uh, Instagram, that was all I saw was picture and quote after quote from President Monson, people sharing their feelings. That's what's so great about social media. It's a place that you can go, you can share those thoughts. I want to tell you, his life is passing. Number one trend on Facebook right now. All of Facebook overnight, it was at one point the number one trend on Twitter as well. It is still in one of the top three spots uh, and a lot of people sharing those thoughts. So I want to share a couple with you. The first I want to share with you is a tweet from Senator Orrin Hatch. President Monson was among the greatest men I have ever known. Service was his motto and humanity his hallmark. Countless were the lives he's touched as prophet, father, and friend. Today I join millions across the globe 
Loeb in mourning his passing. Now, another one here I want to share with you, this one from Congressman, J or former Congressman Jason Chaffetz. My heart is filled with love for President Monson. He touched countless lives, including my own, in a positive and sweet manner, influencing good throughout the world. I also have been looking at the different tweets coming from uh, just people in the community here. And this tweet was from Ashley Wilson. And it's a quote from President Monson that I have seen posted dozens of times this morning already. And it really reflects the type of person that President Monson was and the lessons that he taught during his life of service with the LDS Church. The quote that uh, she had here, never let a problem to be solved become more important than a person to be loved. If we have that, we will get that shown to you here in just a few minutes. So Mike and Lori, we will continue to monitor the reaction of President Monson's passing. We'll bring you all the updates this morning. Folks at home, you can join in the conversation as well using the hashtag Pres Monson, and uh, we will be monitoring those and sharing the thoughts and feelings of, of those as they wake up this morning. And for those who have not heard the news at this point, uh, a lot of people just want a place to go and to share their thoughts and to thank him for his life uh, and the service that he gave to the LDS Church and communities all over the world. And as you mentioned, he touched the lives of a lot of people, uh, not just here in Utah, but across the country, across around the, the world. world. And so I think as the morning progresses, as you mentioned on social media, we're going to see a lot of things. And it'll be interesting to watch and see what people, how he affected people individually. And I think a lot yeah. of them will share that on there. I think everyone will have a story, uh, at least who maybe grew up or is a member of the church. And even if not a member of the church, if you live in this community, you have somehow been touched by President Monson and some of the work that he has done here. So it'll be interesting to see some of those comments and memories that people have. Yeah. And well, and Mike, I want to point out as well to be uh, trending on, on on Facebook in that number one spot that means a lot of people all over this world are talking about this right now about President Monson right now the same goes with Twitter you think about all the the millions of users combined on those two platforms alone and for that to be the number one thing that people are talking about right now that is very significant not only that but the rancor that that goes on on social media right now can it, <laughs> the difference yeah. today can make in terms of uh, the outpouring of support and love for President Monson and on social media, it can kind of change the dialogue here, thankfully, on social media. Heavily give a little balance there to right. some of the stuff we typically see on there. So, yeah. all right, Cher, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, Lad Egan is at Temple Square for us this morning as Utahns begin to react to this news of the passing of President Monson. And Lad, I, I know it's very early there on Temple Square, but as people uh, t tend to want to gather, we talked about on social media, I can only imagine that, that, that later on this morning, people will start to mingle there at, at Temple Square. Yeah, Lori, I can imagine that as well. You know, it is a, a quiet morning. You could almost describe it as somber as we're expecting this news to spread of the passing of Church President Thomas S. Monson. But I look around here today, you can imagine that later on this could be a gathering spot as people come to work here in downtown Salt Lake City and the news spreads. As this news uh, spread last night, as people were still out and about, we were able to talk to a few people. And, you know, to 16 million members of the church worldwide, and this being the headquarters, many are here. And as we talked with them about this passing, even though we knew of declining health in the last year or so, this did come as a shock to many. He was just a really gentle guy. I mean, even, even when he was saying things that might be taken as chastisement, it was impossible not to feel loved. He's just, he was a nice guy. I was actually quite surprised. Um, I mean, I knew his time was coming, but um, when I was baptized in the church, he was the prophet I grew up with. And so it, it's kind of heartbreaking to know that he passed away and just all the revelation, all that he has done for us. It's a sad moment. No, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will be shaken by this news. You know, and you hear that, him being a, a gentle guy and, and those remembering his stories and, and also his memory of, of going back to all those personal stories, also known as someone who could remember names, an excellent memory. And for many young and old, you, know, you heard there the prophet that someone grew up with from 2008 uh, through today. Uh, those uh, younger people remember him as their prophet. But, of course, uh, about 50 years of church service, uh, the older generation also remember him as being a constant with church leadership. We'll stay out here this morning, be watching to see if there are some gatherings as people react to this news. For now, Lori and Mike, back to you. I'm sure most people, as you wait and people uh, come out on Temple Square there, everyone will have an opinion. Uh, and I imagine for the positive uh, when speaking of President Monson. So, Lev, thank you.
Again, if you're just joining us this morning, waking up again, President Thomas S. Monson died just after 10 o'clock last night. He was with family at his home in Salt Lake City at the time that he passed away. He married Frances Beverly Johnson on October 7th, 1948 in the Salt Lake Temple. They are the parents of three children. President Monson's children said he could not do what he did without his wife's support. President and Sister Monson's three children were born back in the 50s. His daughter Anne telling us years ago her father gave her confidence, support, and the kind of father's love that was filled with appreciation. President Monson was called as a bishop at the age of just 22 years old. Ten years later, he served as a mission president in Canada. He became an apostle at age 36. But Anne says he always made sure to provide fatherly attention. Every night, shortly before it was time for me to go to bed, uh, he'd invite me into the office and he'd pull out of his drawer a uh, checkerboard and we'd play three games of checkers. He let me win one, then he'd beat me at one, and then we'd play giveaway checkers and either one of us could win that. But he did that almost every night and that, knowing how busy he was, even though I was just seven, eight, nine years old during those years, that meant a lot to me as a kid. Well, when President Munson became president of the LDS Church, we spoke to some of his friends who knew he had the hallmarks of an unassuming servant. He has this great heart. It's, a, it's an incredibly large heart. It's almost as large as he is. People love him. He always loved animals. And uh, he gave us rabbits, okay, and often brought us eggs, fresh eggs, out of the, from the chickens. And uh, just really was a very nice neighbor to have. And those were some of his neighbors in his beloved neighborhood of Holiday. Friends also recalled President Monson's love of the outdoors and, of course, his positive attitude. Yeah, certainly positive, no question. Now, one, pre one of President Monson's most significant announcements surrounded the age change to the church's worldwide missionary program during the October 2012 General Conference. Able young man who graduated from high school, or its equivalent, regardless of where they live, will have the option of being recommended for missionary service beginning at the age of 18. Women now able to serve at age 19. There was an avalanche of response to the age change, and the Provo MTC was expanded to make room for more missionaries. Nearly 75,000 missionaries are currently serving all around the world. President Monson's imprint is visible on all church programs and businesses. He was involved with the new policy of all worthy males obtaining the priesthood back in 1978, as well as the new LDS scriptures in 1981. President Monson stood at this pulpit here to deliver his first talk in church at the age of 10. Well, later on, when he was a bishop, he stood at that very same pulpit as he shouldered huge responsibilities. His biographer, Heidi Swinton, says that he would sometimes go to the chapel late at night and he would kneel down at the pulpit and pray for guidance. President Monson was also known for having a great sense of humor. Yes. We saw that many times. Yes, we have. Lots of people uh, laughing during his talks. Here's an ex excerpt from his April 2008 priesthood session address where he told the story of a little boy who copied everything he did during a state conference. I decided to put him to the test. <laughs> I looked squarely at him, certain I had his attention, and then I wiggled my ears. My wife told me not to say that. <laughs> he made a vain attempt to do the same, but I had him. That is how I re re yep. remember President Monson. And not only that, but the, when he gave those talks, he would almost look deadpan in, in the, to the camera. Oh, yeah. So very serious. And then that spry little smile would break out over his face. Such a great storyteller. And that moment right there, what was interesting about it was that was right after the passing of President Hinckley. Mm -hmm. And so he was a newly called prophet at that time. And sometimes change is hard for mm -hmm. people, you know. Right. So used to, to President Hinckley for years and years and years. And even though President Monson was right by his side, uh, you had that change. And I think that... 
that was one of the moments that got people. They're mm -hmm. like, all right, I'm all in. Right. He was very <laughs> endearing. Yes, very, very endearing. much so. Well, President Watson's life was not without, of course, health challenges. And his wife, Frances, had a big cancer scare in 1966. And then on October 6th of that year, her tumor was diagnosed as benign. Then in December 1993, President Monson had a raging infection in his left leg. And for a while, doctors weren't sure that they could actually save it. It was the first time President Monson had put on a hospital gown since the age of four when his tonsils had been removed. So he was finally released from the hospital three weeks later. But his full recovery stretched well into 1994. And then his diabetes had compounded that infection. So, you know, again, just some of the history, the life of uh, some of the challenges that he sure. faced along with his wife. But of course, President Monson, he traveled all over the world. He dedicated temples. He traveled extensively. And then in March of 2014, he and President Henry B. Eyring led the cornerstone ceiling of the Gilbert, Arizona Temple. There they are. And the children, of course, participated in that ceremony. That little girl is brought forward. Can you carry her forward so she can have an opportunity? She'll be all right, dear. It's just such a blessing to have a temple so close to us and to be able to see the prophet of God so close. You see how much it meant to them to have mm -hmm. him there during his last conference talk in April. President Monson shared his testimony about the Book of Mormon. I maintain that a strong testimony of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and of his gospel will help us through to safety. If you're not reading the Book of Mormon each day, please do so. If you'll read it prayerfully and with a sincere desire to know the truth, the Holy Ghost will manifest its truth to you. It is true, and I solemnly testify that it is. Well, President Monson served as the 16th leader of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He became, became an apostle on October 10th, 1963. So his service stretched many decades. And then church president, he became that on February 3rd, 2008. President Monson also served as a bishop in a stake presidency and was president of the Canadian Mission from 1959 to 1962. He was a busy, busy man for years and years and years. President Monson worked at the Deseret News and for the newspaper agency corporation. He was married to his wife, Frances, for over 60 years. The couple had three children. Now, Sister Monson also worked at the Deseret News, but President Monson did not learn that until after he took her on a long-awaited date. It was New Year's Eve, 1944. President Monson recalled, quote, I was shocked to learn that Frances had to be home by about 2 o'clock in the morning because she had to go to work on New Year's Day. I wondered what company would require people to work on New Year's Day. Well, it turned out to be another than Deseret News, where she worked in the copy room, or as we called it, the dispatch desk. Well, Sister Monson described the first time her parents met him at a BYU women's conference with the wives of the First Presidency as well as their daughters. And she told the audience that her father showed uh, President Monson a picture of a young missionary, also with the last name of Monson, and asked, hey, do you know him? President Monson said, yes, that is my grandfather. My uh, father was just thrilled. He thought, oh, we knew him. He was a missionary in our home in Sweden and helped convert my mother and father and 12 children. By that time, he was in, so. <laughs> Oh, well, Sister Monson, of course, passed away in May of 2013. And during General Conference that fall, President Monson spoke openly about the pain of losing his beloved wife, Frances. She was the love of my life, my trusted confidant, and my closest friend. To say that I miss her does not begin to convey the depth of my feelings. 
President Monson was known for reaching out to the individual and blessing those in need. His friends knew his loving kindness. It was said that once you knew President Monson, you were always a friend of President Monson. Those closest to him were aware of his constant concern for others as well. Now, President Monson was best known for his consistent, compassionate visits to the sick and the afflicted. He also spoke at hundreds of funerals during his lifetime and sometimes three funerals on the very same day. He liked speaking at funerals, believe it or not, because he felt that they were an ideal setting to teach the gospel. He also typed all of his talks on an old typewriter on the kitchen table. That's old school. That's pretty <laughs> incredible, isn't it? We also, earlier when I was talking to Sam Penrod, uh, he said that President Monson would often duck out of church responsibilities just so he could go visit with people in nursing homes yeah. um, around the valley. And uh, I thought that was interesting because I said to him, I'm sure that was with very little fanfare. And, of course, it was. I'm, I'm sure many people didn't realize um, collectively what he did because he, he tried so hard to touch the individual. Oh, sure. Well, his whole life was service. I mean, when you think of what he has done in the church. And, and you know, like many of us, uh, we're influenced by our parents. Mm -hmm. And he was influenced greatly by both his father and his mother as they served. There's a number of stories, too, how they served countless people as he was growing up. So, you know, he had a front row uh, you know, view to that whole production of his mother and his father as they served others who, who needed help. And he quietly watched and then patterned his life, it seems like, after that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, his whole life was, was to serve others. And not only that, but teaching that to uh, later uh, Latter-day Saints across this uh, country, not only the world, about the, the importance of service. Um, and uh, to the individual, I yeah. think really came through a lot of his talks as well. Yeah. Well, President Monson spoke frequently about rescuing those in need, and he concluded the October 2014 LDS General Conference by encouraging Latter-day Saints to reach out to those who struggle with challenges in life and, you know, to extend that helping hand. And he reminded church members of the importance of the choices they make every day. There is no higher end than this. That we should choose to accept his discipline and become his disciples and do his work throughout our lives. Nothing else, no other choice we can make, can make us what he can. And President Monson also spoke on how everyday choices in life are part of God's plan. Good choices, he said, will lead to happiness. In thousands of ways, we're privileged to choose for ourselves. Here we learn from the hard taskmaster of experience. We discern between good and evil. We differentiate as to the bitter and the sweet. We learn that decisions determine destiny. We will find on our path bitter... President Monson also told members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints around the world, even in life's most difficult moments, they can find hope in their faith, and that will bring them peace. Each of us will walk the path of disappointment, perhaps because of an opportunity lost, power misused, a loved one's choices, or a choice we ourselves make. President Monson certainly leaves behind a legacy of service, but also love. And here are some favorite memories from his friends and his family. Something that I've witnessed throughout my life as he's reached out to others with absolute concern and love. We desire to cultivate a spirit of kindness, of understanding, of love. We seek always to follow our Savior who went about doing good. He's always to the rescue, always available to go on the Lord's errand to do whatever needs to be done to give someone a boost, to give them a sense of comfort, some peace, to be sitting with someone at the last moment of their life. He has this great heart. It's, a, it's an incredibly large heart. It's almost as large as he is. People love him. He always loved animals, and uh, he gave us rabbits, okay, and often brought us eggs, fresh eggs, out of the, from the chickens, and... Uh, just really was a very nice neighbor to have. He grew up in a less affluent part of Salt Lake, and in those early depression years when he was growing up, his mother often would provide food to homeless transients that were coming 
on the railroad and other places there. And I think from his mother's example, he realized the importance of being involved in alleviating the stresses and trials of other people. Each of us will walk the path of disappointment, perhaps because of an opportunity lost, power misused, a loved one's choices, or a choice we ourselves make. As we get together various religions in a community and work toward the common goal, it shall be successful. We know each other well enough that we could just pick up the phone and uh, ask him anything we would like to. Some of the things I've seen, some of us may look to a prophet and think, well, of course a prophet can do those things. But this is what he's been doing his entire life. It's what has been, was modeled for him by his parents and family and other examples that were prominent in his life. He's always looked to the Savior as the perfect example. My counsel for all of us is to look to the lighthouse of the Lord. There is no fog so dense, no night so dark, no gale so strong, no mariner so lost, but what his beacon light can rescue. It beckons through the storms of life. The lighthouse of the Lord sends forth signals readily recognized and never failing. This is breaking news from KSL. Good morning, late break.